Isaiah prayed, Oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence. As fire burns brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things for which we did not look, you came down, the mountains shook at your presence. I'd like us just to take a moment and two or three uh, to pray brief prayers around this thought of God's presence. Moses said, unless you, your presence goes with us, we, we won't go up. The, the scripture speaks in Acts 3.19 of times of refreshing mm -hmm. in the presence mm -hmm. of the Lord. We know that God is mm -hmm. always present, but we want to have a fresh encounter mm -hmm. with Jesus mm -hmm. by the Spirit and through his word tonight. Mm -hmm. So this was the heart of uh, Isaiah. Three times he uses this phrase, your presence. So let's ask God mm -hmm. tonight to grace us here in this room and for those who are watching on Zoom to grace us with his presence Amen. and that he might give us a fresh encounter with the Lord Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Just one or two brief prayers, please. Your presence. Thank you. Lord, thank you that your presence makes everything work. Yes. Mm. Your presence mm. is what mm. makes us come alive. Mm. Even though you've made us mm. alive, we cannot live on old mm. manner, old times of knowing you we want your presence now and with us every day lord yeah, okay. thank you that you are with us here yeah, and now yeah mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you we know shall we go from your presence if you may god if you help you mm -hmm. if we go to the highest wings of heaven there jesus mm -hmm. thank you um, mm -hmm. there's nowhere you are not Lord in the middle of each time. Thank you, Lord, that you're here today, here tomorrow, that you're a great El Shaddai, yesterday, today, forever. Amen. Let me ask you a question to start off with. Have you heard of Titusville, Florida? <laughs> where Beth and I live, <laughs> Titusville, Florida. Well, let me help you. Have you have you heard of Cape Canaveral, or the Kennedy Space Center, or NASA? Oh, yeah. That's where we live, uh, where they launch the rockets from. Uh, have you heard of Orlando? Of course, you've heard of Orlando, but have you heard of Disney World? Yeah. 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 Yes, you have. <laughs> Well, I have a question for you tonight. Seems like an odd question to be asking the saints, but I'll ask it anyway. And I want you to hold this question in your mind as we go through the scriptures. The question is, have you heard of Jesus? Have you heard of Jesus? And what have you heard? What have you heard of Jesus? What do you know of Jesus? What do you believe of Jesus? Hardly anyone in Western civilization hasn't heard mm -hmm. of Jesus. Everyone would know the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. but that knowledge has no bearing on the lives of most people. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Most people believe in Jesus generally, mm -hmm. but not personally. They, uh, they speak about Jesus superficially, but not experientially. Some on the Zoom call, perhaps some in this room tonight, uh, you're hurting for one of two reasons. One is that you, something has happened to you, causing pain causing suffering, could be physical, could be inward, could be emotional, or something has happened 
to someone you love who's in pain and who's suffering. And consequence, consequently, you too are in pain and in, in suffering. And I want us to trust you brought your Bibles. I'm going to look at many scriptures. I've actually written them out here so I don't have to take a lot of time going, uh, finding them in my, in my Bible. But I want us to quickly, very qu quickly, look at four people in the Bible who were hurting. Four people who were suffering. But four people who had heard about Jesus and they had had an encounter with the Lord. An encounter that either changed their lives or the lives of someone else. Two men, two women, two Jews, two Gentiles, rich, poor, upper class, lower class, admired, despised, significant, insignificant. Four different people, all were desperate but all were treated equally and without partiality by Jesus. And all of them heard, believed, they acted, they received, and they were commended by the Lord. So these four people, what had they heard? They heard of Jesus. What had they heard? So my first scripture I've written out here is Mar uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 24 to 25. They'd heard of Jesus. What had they heard? Perhaps they heard this. His fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. You're well aware of the verse in Romans 10, 17 that says, faith comes by hearing, hearing and hearing by the word of God. So who were the four that heard about Jesus and what were their issues? The first one was the woman with the blood issue and her problem her issue was in a word disease we read of her you're familiar with her and her story i won't go into much detail but it says in mark chapter 25 5 rather 25 to 28 now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, that's the thing that's going to be repeated over and over again tonight. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. In verse 28, <clears throat> It says that, verse 28, for she said, if I only touch his clothes, I shall be made well. And immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Wonder what she heard that caused her to do what she did. Could it be that she heard what is recorded in Matthew 14, verses 35 to 36? They brought to him all who were sick and begged him that they might only, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Hallelujah. And this woman, as you know, in Mark 5, 34, was commended by Jesus. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. 
like many of us, all of us, I suppose, she had one limiting thing that was always there. It was this disease she had. She tried everything possibly possible to get rid of that, to get healed. Rather, she grew worse. It was one limiting thing. It reminds me, reminds me of the woman that came to the pastor and said, Pastor, will you pray for me, please? He, she said, would you pray that the Lord would clear the cobwebs out of my head? He said, sure, I'll pray that. So he prayed that the Lord would clear the cobwebs out of her head. She came back two days later and said, Pastor, would you pray for me again, please? They're still there. Would you pray that the Lord would clear the cobwebs out of my head? So he prayed a second time. Two days later, she comes back a third time and said, Pastor, please pray that the Lord would clear the cobwebs out of my head. And he said, no, I won't do it. I'm going to pray that the Lord will kill the spider. <laughs> And I think that's a good prayer. Her one thing, her spider, was this disease that she had. I don't know about you, but personally, I had more than one thing. I can remember it was a Sunday night meeting in 1976. Been to the Sunday morning meeting, and I came away from that meeting depressed. It was just me where I was at. And that afternoon, I just got alone with the Lord and said, Lord, I cannot continue. I've got these four things in my life. They're massive. They're mountains in my life. They're restricting me. I can't get free. You've got to do something, Lord. And this is what I did. I wrote those four things down on a piece of paper and I said, Lord, if if you don't deliver me from these four things, I won't be able to go on. That's it. I'm finished. But I believe you can. And so I wrote those four things down on a piece of paper and I went to the Sunday night meeting. Fred Tomlinson was our leader and he was leading the meeting and we might have sung one song and I stopped the meeting out of character for me. And I told them what I've just told you. I've got four things written on this piece of paper, and I want prayer. Will you pray for me, please? I'm desperate. And so I said to Fred, do you want to see what's on my paper? He says, no, God knows what's on your paper. God knows what, you're writ what you've written. God knows what your four things are. And they prayed for me that night. And God delivered me. One of the reasons I know they were there were four enormous roadblocks, chains in my life. And I, I can only tonight remember one of them. And it was fear. Big one for many of us. It was fear. Praise be to God. The second person we look at tonight is the Gentile woman whose daughter was demon possessed. So the issue for her was demonic. It says in Mark chapter 7, verse 25, for a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. She heard about Jesus and she came and fell at his feet. And you remember that she begged the Lord that he would heal her demon-possessed daughter, who wasn't present there. But the Lord said to her, you remember, it's not right that I give the children's food to the dogs. And she says, that's true. I agree with you, Lord. But even the dogs get to, he he get to eat of the crumbs that fall from the table. Mm -hmm. And Jesus again commended this woman. Oh, woman, how great is your faith, and her daughter was healed at a distance in that very moment. What did this woman hear? hear? She'd heard of Jesus. We read that in Matthew 17, 14 to 15, and verse 18. I'll read it to you. It says, 
Perhaps she heard this. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. He's an epilep uh, epileptic, and he suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the wa water. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Perhaps she heard that and can relate. I've got a woman, a daughter, who's not in her right mind, who's demon-possessed, and Jesus healed. The third one is blind Bartimaeus, and he, of course, had a disability. It says in Matthew, or Mark 10, verses 46 to 47, they came to, Jesus, they came to uh, Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of uh, Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth passing by, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth passing by, he began to cry out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. They said, Bartimaeus, <laughs> be quiet, shut up. <laughs> and he cried out even the more, remember. And finally, they said, they brought this good word to him. He's calling for you. Be of good cheer. He's calling for you. And he comes to Jesus. And Jesus has this blind man in front of him. And he asked him this question. What do you want me to do for you? Thankfully, he didn't say, Lord, could you give me a seeing eye dog? No, he said, Lord, I want to receive my sight. And Jesus commended him and commended him for his faith. I wonder what he had heard. It says in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, right at the beginning of the Lord's ministry, perhaps he'd heard this, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, so Jesus said, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Bartimaeus, your faith has made you well. Jesus was passing by. I believe there are times, perhaps it's a time tonight in our gathering where the Lord is very present, that Jesus is passing by and he's speaking to us as we consider, what have I heard about Jesus? What do I really believe in my heart of Jesus? If he's passing by tonight, will he stop? Will he help me? Will he hear my cry? Some years ago, Beth will remember, we were in California, in Orange County. We were in a place called Newport Beach, very uh, expensive posh area of Orange County. It's where John Wayne lived. In fact, the airport in is named after him, the John Wayne Airport. And we were in this coffee shop on what is called the Pacific uh, Pacific Coast Highway. And we're sitting outside, we're having our coffee and our bagel, and all of a sudden the traffic stopped. 10, 15 minutes. No traffic whatsoever. And then all these black limousines drive by. And one of them stood out. And it was carrying President Bill Clinton. And we'd heard afterwards that he was on his way to San Diego to have a debate with Robert Dole, uh, who was the Republican candidate for the presidency, presidency that year. It was the president of the United States passing by. And if me and all my need cried out hearing it was the president, would he have stopped? <laughs> would he have helped me? Could he do anything for me? Aren't you thankful? Aren't we so thankful that when Jesus passes by, he has time for us. Amen. He does stop. He hears our cry and our plea, and he's here to help. 
Well, the last one, we've, we've heard of issues of <clears throat> disease, the demonic, disability. The next one is a big one, dying. In Luke 7, verses 1 to 3, this is about the centurion soldier, soldier servant who was dear to him and dying, you remember. Now, when he concluded all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum and a certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, there it is again, when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders to the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. You wonder why he did that. What had he heard? Perhaps he'd heard the story about Jairus, where it says in Luke 8, 49 to 50, while he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, do not be afraid, only believe, and she will be made well. And you remember this centurion uh, who so loved his servant. We read the scripture that he was dear to him and dying. And he'd heard about Jesus. He didn't think himself worthy to go into the presence of the Lord, but he sent uh, the elders there to him. And he communicated that um, he understood authority. He had people under his command. He said, when I say go, they go. When I say uh, stay, they stay. When I say do this, they do it. I understand authority, and I understand that you are the great authority. Just speak the word, and my servant will be healed. And he was commended. This was a, a Roman soldier, a Roman centurion. Jesus said to him, I have not found so great faith, not even in Israel. Go your way as you have believed. So let it be done for you. So, with our four tonight, two believed for themselves. They heard and believed that Jesus could do something for them. Lord, heal me of my whatever it might be. Two believed for themselves. Two believed. For others. They heard and believed that Jesus could do something for someone else. Lord, heal my daughter, heal my servant. So we're here tonight. Perhaps you're in the place where you're like one of these four and you want to pray, you want prayer, either for yourself. Or you want to pray for someone else who is hurting. Have you heard of Jesus? What do you really believe about Jesus? That he loves you. He cares about you. In your condition. Or the burden that you're carrying. For a spouse. For a child. For a loved one. For a friend. And you're, you're hurting, you're burdened, and you want to cry out tonight to him. These are four wonderful stories, aren't they? Wonderful stories. We can come to the Lord for ourselves. We can come to the Lord for one another. So I would just like to ask, is there anyone here tonight who would say, I want prayer for myself. I need to be healed. I need to be touched by the Lord, physically, emotionally, spiritually. You might have one thing. You might have four things like I had those many, many years ago, but they're very real, very inhibiting, very painful. And I can testify that Jesus does deliver. Hallelujah. It says of him in Acts 10, 38, 
that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good, healing, delivering, saving all those who were oppressed of the devil. So let's begin. Is there anyone here tonight? Just raise your hand like brother. Yeah. Okay. Just uh, on Zoom, uh, you've heard the request. Um, just uh, you, you raise you raise your hand or both your hands up before the Lord, and let's those who didn't raise their hand. Let's pray for these who are asking for healing for themselves. Thank you, thank you for uh, being transparent, opening your your hearts and saying, "I want God to touch me." Let's pray for these who have lifted their hands. Okay. One or two, nice and loud, pray, and maybe I'll I'll conclude. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Maybe I won't conclude. Maybe I'll start to get us going. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yeah. God would have the Spirit of God would say to you, brother, would say to you, sister. Take these simple words of mm -hmm. truth. Yeah, yeah. They have power. There's yeah. power in these words Praise if Jesus. you will believe them. Praise I Jesus. am the Lord that healeth thee. Yeah. That's the word of the Lord to you who have raised your hand tonight. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Others pray as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for these ones we've heard about, Lord. They're, they were real people. Amen. They're not just stories in a, in a, in a book, Lord, but they're real people yeah. who had real yeah. encounters yeah. with Jesus. And, and you did heal them, Lord. Yeah. You did meet their needs. And we thank you, Lord, that when we trust you, Lord, Lord, you, you somehow can allow faith yeah. to believe, Lord, that, yes, you will heal me. You will you, you deliver me from this thing, Lord. Glory to God. Lord. Praise thank you, thank you for that, Lord. Thank, thank, thank you, you for the testimony of so many people. We read about the scriptures, so many people we've heard about, so many people we have met in our lives, Lord, and things you've done for us, Lord, each one of us. You've, you've done things for each one of us, Lord. We can all testify to that, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being that wonderful healer. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Lord thank you that there's nothing that you cannot heal somebody from. Mm. Lord, and as we heard this morning, you show us the extreme cases, Lord, and there were so many yeah. people with extreme sicknesses okay. who you healed, Lord. Amen. To show us, Lord, that there's, there's nothing that you cannot do. Yeah. Lord, you are, you are never powerless against these things. Thank you. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that are the healer, mm. Lord, and you, Lord, you have power to heal, and you yeah. delight to heal. Yeah. So we do ask for each one who needs your healing, Lord, that you would put your hand upon them and just simply come and heal them from their infirmities, Lord God. Amen. 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 Lord, we come to the one who not only healed in the pages of scripture but yeah. you brought everything from nothing in yeah, the beginning yeah, it yeah. was your word that created yeah. everything that we have around us Lord we yeah. can see yeah. that your word is so powerful Praise yeah. you, Jesus. Oh, we you see that, that when you us. say let there be yeah. light it happens yeah. Yeah. Lord yeah. Really good mm. good. and we believe in your word mm. yeah. even Jesus. today as powerfully as mm. It ever has been, Lord, and we ask you to speak healing to yeah. those mm. here who mm. indicated need, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Speak your Amen. word of healing. We pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. So when they heard, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, mm. You are God who made heaven and earth and the yeah. sea and all that is in them. Yeah. Yeah. Who by the mouth of your servant David 
said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look at look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word yeah. by stretching out your hand to heal Amen. and that signs and wonders yes, may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Two of the four were burdened, were distressed. Were suffering and hurting mm -hmm. because of loved ones, people that they cared about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, secondly, oh, mm -hmm. we want to pray mm -hmm. for others. Mm -hmm. I want to pray for a family member, I want to pray for a friend. Mm -hmm. Let's intercede by name yes. tonight now mm -hmm. for others, like these two did. Mm -hmm. This is the recording of as we pray for people by name. Yeah. We don't want us to go on the internet necessarily. Yes, definitely, yeah. yeah. We could finish it down, yeah. 